Welcome back to the 17 News at Sunrise podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. Good morning. Right now at 5, a string of shootings over the weekend, and one leads to a crowd swarming Kern Medical. What happened and the investigations into those shootings coming up? Vandalism is an ongoing problem in downtown Bakersfield, with many people blaming the homeless. Bakersfield police say there's more to it than that. In a busy weekend in Washington, the FDA approves the new one-dose Johnson & Johnson vaccine, and the House passes President Biden's $1.9 trillion COVID relief bill. We'll tell you what comes next and how soon you could see the shot and the stimulus check. This is Monday, March 1st, 2021. Good morning. Good to have you with us. I'm Maddie Jansen, anchoring from here at home this morning. Alex Fisher holding down the Fortin studio. Hard to believe we're already in March, Alex. Yeah, it is hard to believe. I feel like we're still getting over last March, if we haven't already. Uh, yeah. So it's hard to believe that we are a year coming up on the first days of the, of the coronavirus pandemic. A lot of people remembering what we've been through over the past year. So we'll get more to the, we'll get to uh, more on that throughout this month. But we're talking about your forecast this morning, and it was a gorgeous weekend. And we even saw some wind yesterday, Kev. I was out and about yesterday, noticed a few wind gusts. Yeah, we did see a few uh, wind gusts early in the morning. Uh, the afternoon was just beautiful all around. I sat out on the patio. We had some nice temperatures, and that is going to continue. We may see a little bit of a breeze uh, throughout today as well. But as we take a look at the satellite and radar, we are seeing the clear skies and no changes on that front for us today. And yes, we ended out February. And I wanted to show you the National Weather Service uh, issued these uh, kind of rankings uh, and where we sit in terms of the driest uh, Februarys on record and this year we sit at eight with 0 0.09 inches in the rain gauge and you can see uh, number one in the rankings was 1912 when we picked up no rain whatsoever in the month of February and 13th spot was 1933 when we picked up 1400 so gives you a little bit of perspective in terms of rain and where we rank in terms of the driest February's on record and those started back in 1893. Here's a look outside right now clear skies 54 degrees and east southeast wind at at seven. As we take a look at the day, you can see temperatures are going to be nice and warm. We're looking at mid to upper 70s possibly. And then for the mountains, uh, we're starting out a little chilly, 36 degrees. And east southeast wind at 11. Do expect a little bit of a breeze out your way. And right now, our wind profile is showing the strongest of the winds over the grapevine if you're headed that direction. And uh, throughout the day, you can see those winds will pick up into the mountains and temperatures expected into the 50s. I'll have much more on your forecast coming up in just a bit. But first, back over to you. All right, Kev, thanks so much. Our top story this morning, a string of violent shootings over the weekend left at least two people dead and five others wounded. One of those shootings, which happened at Martin Luther King Jr. Park, caused a dangerous situation at Kern Medical. According to police, at least two people suffered minor wounds during a shooting at a massive gathering at the park on Saturday night. BPD says they don't exactly know how many people were hurt because some witnesses didn't want to talk. Part of that crowd traveled to Kern Medical. BPD says fights broke out and three people were arrested for refusing to disperse. One man, Clifford Given, was charged in connection with the shooting. Community advocate Arlena Waller says these issues in southeast Bakersfield are rooted in long-standing problems that city leaders keep failing to address. When you look at the last 30 years, this area has not received much resources, much support. Um, leadership haven't been present in that area. You know, so almost they're almost been left to, you know, been for themselves. But that wasn't the only shooting Saturday night. Less than two hours earlier, a woman was killed during a memorial at Wayside Park. She has not been identified, but Waller says she knows the victim's family. And the woman was a mother killed in a senseless act. There's innocent children being affected every single day. It is our responsibility as adults to stop this senseless crime. Wayside sits in Bakersfield's 93304 zip code. MLK Park is part of the much larger 93307 zip code. And according to our KGET homicide tracker, both areas account for more than a quarter of county homicides since 2015. 
According to BPD, they have not received a lot of information about any suspects in the Wayside shooting. If you know any information, you're asked to call the police department at 327-7111, or you can stay anonymous by calling the secret witness line at 322-4040. One person was killed and another wounded in a separate shooting in Arvin Saturday night. Arvin police officers were called to the area of Haven Drive and Grove Street around 6 o'clock in the evening for a report of a man lying in the ground. Officers arrived and found two men. One had a gunshot wound and first responders say he was unresponsive. He was pronounced dead at the scene. The second victim had also been shot but was conscious and breathing. Authorities rushed him to a local hospital. The investigation's ongoing. You, if you know anything about this case, call Arvin Police at 854-5583. Saturday night, another shooting, this time in Lamont. Deputies were called to the 8,000 block of Herald Street just after 7 o'clock. When first responders arrived, they found one man with non-life-threatening injuries. Authorities say the victim was shot in a reported drive-by, but that was under investigation. Authorities have not released the identity of the victim or information about a suspect. So if you know anything about this shooting, you're urged to call the sheriff's office at 861-3110. You can also call the secret witness line at 322-4040. And the sheriff's office is investigating a shooting that wounded a man in Oildale Friday night. This happened around 11 p.m. near Northchester and McCord Avenues. Deputies found a man with a gunshot wound on the scene, and he was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. The sheriff's office has not released any information on the shooter at this time. A local business is left with heavy repairs this morning after a car drove into its building late last night. A driver drove into the new generation real estate group off Stein Road and Beechwood Street in southwest Bakersfield. And from this video, video you can see the damage done to the building. According to witnesses, the driver of the vehicle fled on foot. Bakersfield Police Department was on scene, but they have not confirmed reports of the driver leaving the crash. It's unknown whether anyone was hurt. Over the past few weeks, Bakersfield has seen a string of window vandalisms, with blame being pointed at the homeless population. But is there more to this story? Is there more than one side to this story? 17's Eliana Capian joins us in downtown Bakersfield with more. Good morning, Eliana. Good morning, Alex. Yeah, with the overpopulation of the homelessness increasing here in Bakersfield, many can be seen laying in front of business storefronts like this one. But recently, downtown businesses have seen an increase in window vandalism, making many question, is this a homeless issue or a deeper problem? Robert Pear with Bakersfield Police Department says vandalism is an ongoing issue citywide. Over the past five days, we've received 25 reports of vandalism, but that is not just to the downtown area that is throughout the city of Bakersfield. Earlier this month, an all too familiar scene, a rash of window damage in the downtown business area. Mark Vanderen was arrested and charged with six offenses of felony vandalism. The damage estimated at over $7,000. Roscoe Rolnick owns Guarantee Shoe Center in downtown. I've had more broken glass and broken windows in the last eight months than I have in 68 years of business. Rolnick says although he has seen the homeless population skyrocket, that's not the issue. The problem is the people who have mental issues. The state and other loca locality municipalities have eliminated all the health care facilities for these people. BPD says there's more to it than that. Sometimes it's a mental health issue, sometimes it's destruction for destruction's sake, or sometimes it's uh, got more nefarious reasons like an attempt burglary. Just blocks away in East Chester, the building owned by Stephen Harris suffered smoke damage after a fire in the business next door, causing his tenants to close and go out of business. What's going on in my situation is not, has nothing to do with mental capacity. It's a hardcore criminal element that's just running around these streets creating havoc. What I've been trying to do is restore the building, but it's almost impossible to do because I'm getting uh, break-ins every night. Homeless people coming in, uh, vandalizing, and uh, I can't keep them out. We. We board up the windows and doors. They just rip the, the boards off. 
Uh, they have no fear, no fear of the police. Harris says the police rarely come out unless they happen to be passing by and catching someone in the act. Typically, they tell him to call code enforcement. Harris says this has been an ongoing issue for the past month, with the last break-in happening Thursday night. The city needs to just make a stand. At some point, you know, this is really a war against uh, competing civil rights. And really, does a person's property rights have any, any meaning or value at all? Or are the city politicians here just going to cede, surrender entire areas and just allow lawlessness? Harris says he doesn't blame the police for this, but hopes his message is a call to action for the city politician. This is a political situation. The city leaders here are not doing their job. It's, it's uh, unconscionable that they would surrender sections of a, of a city in which the area is trying to undergo redevelopment. Councilman Andre Gonzalez responded with a statement saying, quote, I understand that many downtown business owners and property owners are frustrated with vandalism. Frankly, I'm frustrated too. I've worked day and night alongside my colleagues on the council, city staff, BPD, and downtown stakeholders to respond to issues in downtown Bakersfield. Now for a look at that full statement, you could head to KGET.com. In Bakersfield, Ileana Capellan, 17 News. Welcome back here at 520. Making news around the nation, former President Donald Trump spoke this weekend at the Conservative Political Action Committee conference in Florida, addressing the future of the Republican Party while bashing the Biden administration and his political rivals. The former president spoke on many topics, including border control, the pandemic, the Second Amendment, and energy, among other things. Mr. Trump called this time in history, quote, a struggle for America's principles. He vowed for the Republican Party to unite and be stronger than ever before after denouncing the idea he would create a third party. Woven into the talk, the former president touted his time in office while claiming the Biden administration had had, quote, the worst first month of any presidency. Already the Biden administration has proven that they are anti-jobs, anti-family, anti-borders, anti-energy, anti-women and anti-science. Actually, as you know, they just... Mr. Trump also took aim at Republicans who supported that vote to impeach him, including Hanford Congressman David Valadeo. His address to the crowd brought a close to the four-day event. In a statement yesterday afternoon, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo said if jokes he made at work were insensitive or too personal, he's sorry. Two former aides to Cuomo have come forward since December, claiming the governor sexually harassed them. Cuomo's statement says in part, I acknowledge some of the things I have said have been misinterpreted as an unwanted flirtation. To the extent anyone felt that way, I am truly sorry about that. New York's attorney general wants an independent investigation into the sexual harassment allegations. Sunday, Attorney General Letitia James urged the governor's office to give her an official referral to start that investigation. Preparations are happening today in Minneapolis ahead of the trial of a former police officer charged with killing George Floyd. Derek Chauvin's trial is scheduled to start this month with jury selection beginning on the 8th. This morning, the Minneapolis City Council is scheduled to be briefed about the city's plans and preparations related to the trial. Then in the afternoon, the Minnesota Court of Appeals will hear from prosecutors requesting to reinstate a third degree murder charge against Chauvin which was dismissed last October. Joven is charged with second-degree murder and manslaughter in Floyd's death. KGET Business Watch is brought to you by Grapevine MSP Technology Services, the Valley's leading IT service provider. Welcome back to your 17 Business Watch. And Jersey Mike Subs kicks off its 11th annual month of giving today. And the sandwich shop is hoping to raise a record-breaking amount of money for charity. Jersey Mike's locations in Bakersfield are partnering with the League of Dreams, and all month long, you can make donations through the Jersey Mike's app or in stores. And then on March 31st, all sales purchased the entire day will be, donate, will be donated to the local nonprofit. For a full list of locations, just head to our website, kjet.com. 
President Biden is looking to fulfill a campaign promise for giving federal student loan debt up to $10,000. NBC's Dan Sheneman has the details on who will be left paying the tab. Myself, I'm over $30,000 in debt, and it'd be nice to be forgiven for those loans. Even just like a little bit of money to help repay those loans would be really helpful. For many, the American dream includes a college education. That education comes with a hefty price tag. Nearly 45 million Americans owe $1.71 trillion in federal student loan debt. The topic front and center in the nation's capital. Canceling student loan debt is the single most effective executive action that President Biden can take. I'm prepared to write off the $10,000 debt. In a recent survey, bestcolleges.com found four in 10 Americans favored canceling student loan debt. 60% of the people that we surveyed uh, across the country said uh, that the student loans that they had have held them back in some way. I think there's a very legitimate question to ask, how fair is a proposal like this? We're talking about people who have gone to college, have acquired student loan debt. Not all of them have graduated, by the way. And all loans aren't created equal. The proposed forgiveness is for existing federal loans only. It would just basically be an across-the-board forgiveness of some portion of federal student loan debt. While details are scarce, one thing is known. This kind of a proposal would shift at least part of that cost back on the taxpayer. Taxpayer is absorbing billions, if not trillions of dollars worth of debt. Dan Sheneman, NBC News. Making news around the nation and taking a live look this morning at the Johnson & Johnson rollout effort at their facility in Shepherdsville, Kentucky this morning. Over the... Maddie, good morning. That new vaccine is expected to roll out this week, even though the government's warning the shipments to states may not be consistent. Johnson & Johnson promising 4 million doses of their new one-shot COVID vaccine this week, but the Biden administration says don't wait for it. People should take the one that's most available to them. Money for more vaccines and direct payments, all part of COVID relief now in the hands of a divided Senate. We're moving ahead with a bill that probably will get no Republican votes. Republicans argue it's packed with things that have nothing to do with the virus. Do we need to pay for bridges? Does that have anything to do with COVID? Do we need to pay for tunnels for Silicon Valley? Some Democrats now want to revoke business tax credits instead after a minimum wage increase was cut out. We're going to have to spend the next several days or even weeks figuring out what the best path for it is. Today, President Biden meets with Mexican President Andres Manuel Lopez Obrador. Border security is sure to top their agenda one day after former President Trump slammed Biden's immigration policy at the conservative CPAC conference. There is no better example than the new and horrible crisis on our southern border. We did such a good job. It was all worked. Nobody's ever seen anything like we did, and now he wants it all to go to hell. It's become a Trump party. It's not a party of reason. Uh, it's a party that has turned its back. Trump, in his first major speech since leaving office, hinting he'll run again in 2024. He also called out Republicans who voted for impeachment. I'm Tracy Potts, 17 News. <laughs> Working in the spirit of the Golden Empire, this is 17 News at Sunrise. The 17 News at Sunrise podcast is a production of KGET and Next Star Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.